Hi, I'm Ernie Deering, and today I'd like to go over the setup of the Clipper Proportional Valve Driver. At this point, you've probably already selected a proportional valve from Clipper's EVP line, so let's go ahead and jump in here and get started. So let's connect that valve up to the driver first. There's a wiring diagram on the TDS online. Now that we have the valve connected, Let's make sure that the output current jumper is set properly for the valve you have connected. The factory setting for the jumper is 92 milliamp output for 0 to 20 volt valves. If you are using a different coil, change the jumper accordingly. And while we have the case open, let's look at the command jumper as well to see if the setting is correct for your needs. If you are using 0 to 5 volts, 0 to 20 milliamps, or 4 to 20 milliamps to control this driver, then the jumper setting for the input command signal is in the right spot from the factory. However, if you want to use 0 to 10 volts, you'll need to change that jumper. See the installation and operations manual for more information about the jumper positions. Okay, the next step is to connect the command signal source. We have a PLC on this board whose analog output we could use to control the driver, but that's not what we're going to do. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to use a potentiometer coming off a 24 volt power supply that will drive the driver. So we hook up the plus and the minus terminals up to the plus and minus of the power supply. And then the sweep output of the potentiometer becomes the analog input command signal to our driver. However, care must be taken. I need you to pay attention now. In this situation, you could potentially have 24 volts going right to the command terminal of the EVPD. That will fry it. Do not do that. Next, we will connect the power supply to the driver. The high side of the power supply is connected to the far left terminal and the low side of the power supply is connected to the terminal immediately to its right. The driver will not be harmed in the event that you hook the power supply up backwards, but it also won't function until the connection is done properly, at which time the red power LED should be lit. Also, bear in mind that the command signal must be referenced to the low side of the supply power. So for example, if we were using the PLC, its analog ground must reference the ground of the power supply, which is shown here. All right, now all of our hookups are done. So now let's go to tuning the driver. The first thing we want to do is adjust the command threshold or command dead band. And this is the point in the command voltage or command current at which the driver understands it's time to begin outputting current. So the first thing I want to do is to adjust the command voltage to the minimum voltage for which I'd like to see an output. In this case, let's say 0.1 volts. Now, I adjust the top potentiometer, labeled DB for dead band, clockwise, raising the command threshold until the green status indicator goes dark, at which point the threshold is higher than the signal that I am giving the driver. Then I will turn the pot counterclockwise just enough to get the status indicator to come back on so we can move to the next step. So, since the green status indicator is lit, we know that the driver is supposed to be putting out a current, but the minimum current needs to be adjusted such that we have enough current that the valve is just about to open. With the valve connected to supply pressure and some way of observing the valve's flow, whether a flow meter, a bubble jar, whatever system behavior is important to you, turn the I-min pot clockwise until you get some minimum amount of flow through the valve, then counterclockwise until this valve just stops. So most people will probably want to control their EVP valve all the way down to zero flow, and that's the way we set it up in this step. But perhaps your needs are different. Maybe you want the valve to open to 5 liters per minute and then adjust from 5 to 15 liters per minute. In that case, you're going to set your current minimum at a different level. 
Finally, we need to adjust the maximum current. For most applications, that will probably be the max rated current of the valve, and this value should never be exceeded. In some cases, you may find that the max flow of the valve is more than what you need in your application. In that case, you can use the I-max adjustment of the driver to limit the amount of flow through the valve. In any case, every setup ought to include tuning all three of these potentiometers just to make sure you've got what you want. So once we have the 5 volt command at the input terminal, we will turn the I-max pot clockwise until we have the flow or system response that we are looking for. If you continue to turn the pot and no more change in flow happens, back off counterclockwise until you reach that point where the flow just starts to drop. That will be the maximum flow of the valve. And so we're done now. Those are all the steps you need in order to get up and running with the proportional valve and the proportional valve driver. If you have any troubles or any questions about the setup, please contact one of us at